Now they say a good parent shouldn't have to pick favorites, but I do think if you're a realist, you probably just wanna make sure that the least favorite one doesn't figure it out. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Sony a7 IV versus the Sony FX30. Now these guys might have similar sizes, but they're vastly different cameras, and we're gonna to try to figure out which one is better for video. Now despite the fact that one of these cameras is part of Sony's cinema line, these cameras do have similar shaped bodies. Both cameras are small, light, and compact, and it allows for versatility. However, the actual mapping on these cameras make one a little bit easier to use for video. Now, if you haven't noticed, Sony FX30 does not have any electronic viewfinder, something that I generally don't use while I'm shooting video, but if you want to do photography, the Sony a7 IV makes a little bit of sense. Now, the Sony FX30 does have a similar body to the Sony FX3, which is nice because it actually has a lot of the video-centric features already mapped on the camera body itself. That makes it easier to toggle certain settings or to lock certain settings once you have them dialed in. But however, on the flip side, the Sony a7 IV does have a custom dial, so you can switch between modes and photography, regular video, and even on your S and Q modes, which makes it a little bit easier to use in a run and gun situation. On top of that, and this is a feature that I wish was on the Sony FX30, but when you turn off the Sony a7 IV, it does give you a sensor cover which protects from dust and different specs from damaging your sensor. Now, both cameras do have dual card slots. However, the Sony FX30 has two spaces for CF Express cards, and the Sony a7 IV only has one. But all in all, in terms of video production and versatility, as well as the body size, I do prefer using the Sony FX30. Now, when you take the sensor cap off of both these cameras, you are gonna notice one very obvious difference. The Sony a7 IV is a full frame camera Camera where the Sony FX30 is something called an APS-C or a crop sensor type camera. Now when working with full frame cameras, you're gonna have slightly better low light and you're also gonna have better depth of field that's going to be on some of the full frame bodies that are available. You're also gonna have a 33 megapixel sensor on the Sony a7 IV and a 26 megapixel sensor on the Sony FX30. However, being an APC type sensor, if we're gonna try to equate things, it might actually be a slightly lower megapixel count. But regardless, both these cameras can take photos. Now, in terms of menu systems, both these cameras do look pretty much alike, but the Sony FX30 does borrow the quick menu from the Sony FX3 in order for you to dial in different video settings on the fly without having to sift through different menus. On top of that, the Sony FX30 can also load in LUTs. That way you can see what your color grade is gonna look like before you take things off a set and put it into your editing program. Now, this is a great feature, especially if you're in video production, because you can see the type of looks that you use in real time without having to do offloading, open up DaVinci Resolve and buy my LUT pack and try to try these things out and to see how everything is going to look. Okay, so let's talk about image quality. Now, both cameras are gonna have similar picture profiles with S-Log3 and S-Cinetone. They're also gonna have the 10-bit 422 codec, which is not only gonna give you the flexibility in post, but it's also gonna give you enough room to match these two cameras if you do have to work with both of them at the same time. Now, to be completely honest, from a color perspective and a sharpness perspective, both of these cameras are pretty much similar, except for the fact that there's a crop. And speaking of crop, you are going to have to multiply your focal length by 1.5 times on the Sony FX30 to get something called a full frame equivalent. So if you are trying to match these two cameras up in terms of your focal length, just make sure that you do a little 1.5 times calculation while putting lenses on the Sony FX30. Now in terms of dynamic range, there is going to be a slight difference between the two of them, where the Sony a7 IV is going to have 15 stops of dynamic range at S-Log3, but the Sony FX30 is going to have 14 stops using the same picture profile. Now if you have things like xylo charts or any of that fancy equipment to find out the difference, you're probably going to find it. However, in the real world when I'm working on client gigs and when I'm operating this camera, having that extra stop of dynamic range isn't something that's been a game changer for the worst for me. And to be honest, as far as dynamic range goes, you're gonna be fine with either one of the choices between these two cameras. Next thing is gonna be the dual base ISO and its low light capabilities. Now, if you do wanna see a more detailed video comparing the low light capabilities between these two cameras and a couple of others, I did leave a card up here that you can go and check that video out. However, these cameras do have different dual base ISOs, although they use the same picture profile. Now, both of them are gonna have a low base ISO at 800, which is pretty easy to deal with, but when you go into your high base ISO, Sony a7 IV is gonna have it at 3200, where the Sony FX30 is gonna have that at 2500. Now, obviously having a full frame camera and using a higher dual base ISO at 3200, you're gonna get better low light and a better depth of field using the Sony a7 IV. But the Sony FX30 does have something going for it in the exposure department, and that's the ability to use Cine EI. Now, Cine EI is an exposure tool that's going to be exclusive to the FX line of cameras, and it's gonna give you the ability to dial in your exposure to make the most out of the dual base ISO at either 800 or 2500. In that longer form low light video, even using the Sony FX30 at 2500 in one of my scenes, it actually held up pretty well in comparison to some of the other full frame cameras that are available. Now, both these cameras are gonna have a variety of different 
shooting modes at 24 frames a second, 60 frames a second, and even 120 frames a second as well. Now the difference is that the Sony a7 IV being full frame obviously is going to record full frame at 24 frames a second, where the Sony FX30 is going to be crop sensor for pretty much every one of its features. However, the Sony FX30 and the Sony a7 IV have both the same crop factor at 4K 60 frames a second, which is probably going to be the main slow motion setting if you're using either one of these two cameras. But let's find out actually which one looks a little bit better. So when I put these side by side, I actually can't find a very big discernible difference between the a7 IV and the Sony FX30. Now outside of the crop factor and compression, which is more so the sensor than the 4K 60 mode, there isn't a giant difference between the two of them. There isn't a lot more noise in one than the other. There isn't better low light in one than the other. And I think you're going to be okay either way. So these two kind of meet in the middle, even though the Sony a7 IV is going to crop in at 4K 60, while the Sony FX30 is pretty much already there. Now both cameras can use 120 frames a second, but this one's a little bit of a toss up. The Sony FX30 has a further crop at 120 frames a second, which means that noise is going to be a little bit more pronounced. So if you're not in a well-lit situation, you actually might not like the images coming out of here. Now the Sony a7 IV can do 120 frames a second, but it can't do it in 4K which means that you're going to have to use 1080p in order to get that mode, which kind of leaves the question of whether or not you want a cropped in 4K 120 frames a second or full frame 120 frames a second, but it's not going to be in 4K at all. And the Sony FX30 can do 240 frames a second at HD. It's going to be cropped in. I still really don't know the practical uses for it, but you have it there if you want to use it. Next, we're gonna test rolling shutter. And on YouTube, it is a little bit ridiculous because a lot of people pick up their cameras and they swing it back and forth and hope that they're gonna get some sort of result. And I really don't wanna to have to do that, but... Now this is a rolling shutter test of the Sony a7 IV versus the Sony FX30. Now, as you can see, I've succumbed to the YouTube algorithm and I'm swinging my camera back and forth like an idiot. But you can see in this test which one actually looks a little bit better when you freeze frame one of them to see how much jello is in the corners of your frame. There. I did it. Now I'm not going to lie, if you're somebody that wants to shoot exclusively in 24 frames a second at full frame, then the Sony a7 IV is probably going to be your best option in terms of getting video. Now, however, this is the part where I'm going to start listing off some features that are video centric on the Sony FX30, which might seem like I'm dunking on the a7 IV a little bit. One is you're going to get external ProRes RAW using an Atomos Ninja 5 recorder and a decent SSD drive. This is going to give me a lot of the RAW controls that are reminiscent of other cameras. And to be honest, at the very least, it's just going to give me one feature that the Sony a7 IV can't do. So if I need that extra edge in terms of my image quality, I could use ProRes RAW in order to do that, where the Sony a7 IV can only record in regular ProRes, which honestly isn't that big of a difference. Next, if you're working on professional productions, commercials, and you're in a multi-cam situation, the a7 IV doesn't have the ability to do time code. But the Sony FX30 does using a special cable that can connect to your camera so you can actually sync up your Sony FX30 to other cameras. So the next time you're on set with someone with an FX9 or an FX6 or even an FX3, you don't have to feel left out because you don't have the necessary equipment. Now we have mentioned the fact that the Sony a7 IV is full frame and the Sony FX30 is an APS-C type sensor. Is that if you have something that's crop sensor, you're actually going to have more cheaper lenses and a better variety to choose from. If you try to put an APS-C type lens on a full frame camera, you're going to get some pretty nasty vignetting. And even though you can punch in using the APS-C mode, you're probably just better off using the Sony FX30 anyways. That means if I have a Super 35 camera like the Sony FX30, I could use different crop sensor cameras from the Cinema line or even some of the cheaper Sony lenses and I could save a little bit more money, which is great, especially if you're starting out. And to be honest, that's what I feel like Sony made this camera for. I don't think it's for people that have the Sony FX9 and want to find something that's a more compact upgrade. And I don't think they made it to replace the Sony FX3 either because it's like half the price. But if you are looking for versatility and to save some money, then having a crop sensor camera is probably going to be better for your wallet. Speaking of better for your wallet, the Sony FX30 is cheaper than the Sony a7 IV, which means that you're going to be a little bit closer to building out a kit on the Sony FX30 with the money that you saved from not buying the Sony a7 IV. Again, I do feel like this camera is for the beginning cinematographer or filmmaker, and they're probably trying to save a little bit of money. So if I could buy a camera that's going to have amazing functionality and the great ergonomics that video productions need, and I'm going to be able to save a couple hundred bucks, I may as well just get myself a lens or get the accessories that I need in order to get this thing working the way I want. And lastly, and after a year of using the Sony a7 IV, it, it does overheat. Now, it's not as bad as a Canon R5 in 2021. However, there is some overheating problems on the Sony a7 IV. And I've actually ran into different situations where it's overheat on me on a professional set, which never looks good. And it's also never fun having to wait until your camera cools down again. Now, the Sony FX30 does have the option to turn the heat sink to high so you could actually mitigate the overheating feature. But it also has an internal cooling system and a fan on it as well. 
which means that the chances of you having that overheating problem is gonna be significantly less than the a7 IV. But the a7 IV does have one thing going for it, and that's gonna be its photography features, which brings us down to the simple question of which one is going to be better for video. Now, if you're someone that solely focuses on photography, but you do wanna take some high quality video, especially if you wanna shoot in 24 frames a second most of the time, then the Sony a7 IV makes a ton of sense. It's great for getting short clips, it's great for getting social media content, and in fact, a lot of the videos that I've shot on this channel is actually using the Sony a7 IV and not the Sony FX30. However, if you're someone that's starting to get into cinematography, get into video production, get into being a DP, and you want a low entry point to get a camera that's gonna have a lot of those video-centric features, and you're not too concerned about the fact that you're gonna have a smaller sensor because you're doing things like lighting your scenes and using proper exposure tools, then the Sony FX30 makes the most amount of sense. And on top of that, it is a cheaper price. So if you wanna get your first lens for a reasonable price, you can pay the same amount of money that you would have paid for something like the Sony a7 IV and get the Sony FX30 instead. When we're talking about taking up video production as a profession, if you wanna go fast, you can use a Sony a7 IV. But if you wanna go far, I think the Sony FX30 is a great place to start at least in my opinion. That being said, leave a comment down below. Are you team a7 IV or are you team Sony FX30? I might start a fight in the comments, but I'm gonna step out of this one because my main camera is the Sony FX6. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.